red light to push the weight 108 pounds. Break that full record. 15 victories with only 70 beats. With 10 of his victories coming a way of knockout. Representing the world in boxing stable of the Indian Sea, there is Jesus. Soriano versus J. Sever Absi. This is for what they're, they're calling the Silver OPBF light flyweight title. I imagine that's something like an interim belt. Uh, but we have 12 rounds of action coming up uh, between uh, Soriano, who's 16 1 and 1, with eight knockouts from General Santo City, now fighting out of the uh, United Boxing Gym. Victory Mall up in Kalokan City uh, against Jaceber Absid. So we are the first round. And I imagine that the winner then would get the, would get a shot at the current OPBF uh, Light Flyweight Champion, Edward Hino. Absid is from Hukidnon. As we see Soriano uh, getting a nice three punch combination. Soriano's got to feel like he's got a, a second lease on his career. He was off from 2013 until earlier this year in 2017. Uh, he had, uh, from what I'm told by his trainer, Juna Grabio, uh, an irregular ECG uh, result, which kept him out of the ring. He had to be cleared medically. Um, they checked him again. And I guess he uh, met the requirements and uh, he's back in this, he's back fighting again. So it must feel like he has a second lease on his career. And there was a clash of heads. And that's what's gonna happen sometimes when you have a, an Orthodox and a Southpaw fighting against each other. Two guys who uh, lunge forward simultaneously. Soriano's got to get something going in his career. He's a 108 pounder at 29. Uh, we start to go downhill at that point. Soriano is, uh, I guess, uh, rocked back by a straight left hand from Abseed. But Soriano's in pretty good company. Um, he's training alongside um, fighters like John Real Casimero, the former uh, two division world champion. Soriano was um, supposed to fight for the full championship earlier this year at the uh, OPBF convention in Palawan. That was until, and it was a nice straight right hand to the body by Soriano, another one. But they, they had stripped Edward Hino uh, briefly, saying that he had um, neglected to make his first title defense against uh, at, at the convention. And through, um, there was there was a minor outcry in the in the sport here in the Philippines about that. It seemed as if um, I, 
a champion, uh, the OPBF champion, was being stripped unjustly, and uh, the promoters uh, organized about it, and uh, Edward Hino was reinstated as champion. That fight was uh, taken off the, um, the Palawan uh, convention. And uh, tonight we have a uh, silver or interim championship fight. So we're getting a look at Ivan Soriano and Jacever Absi. Soriano's a fighter who I've, I've seen in the gym, but it's my first time to see him up close. And uh, he looks like someone who is at 29 years old, ready to make his move in his career. And it's uh, Soriano in the uh, red and yellow trunks, and Abseed in the uh, black and white trunks. Soriano lands a straight right hand to the body. I asked Agrabio what kind of a puncher uh, Soriano is. He's an okay puncher, but he's really a boxer. He's a guy who's going to pilot points and, and uh, use strategy. Uh, and, and we're seeing that tonight. We're seeing um, this obvious quickness in, in Soriano. But he's uh, not a guy who's going to blow you away. I and mean, there's very few people at 108 pounds that are like that. Soriano's making a uh, concerted effort to the body to slow his opponent down. Soriano went for the, uh, swung for the fences there. Uh, but whiffed out, and uh, Absid missed with the uh, counter. That, but uh, Soriano is doing pretty good work with that straight right hand to the body, and and not only will that wear a guy down uh, and take out his and, and erode his stamina, but it'll also bring his hands down. And he, if he has the same motion that for the straight right hand, and, he, and the guy thinks it's coming down to the body, and his hands are low, and gets caught on the chin. That could be a knockout. So it was a nice, quick uh, check hook from Soriano to get off the ropes. Spin right back to the center of the ring, and Soriano's got some speed. But Abseed is a uh, he's a game guy, and when you put these belts on the line, even if they're not the big world championship belts, fighters want the belts. They, every fighter dreams of having those belts, and. Uh, even when the, the fighter's not a top guy. So, when, so you're going to see guys uh, like someone in Abseed's uh, position uh, fight out of their skin a bit. So Soriano takes advantage of uh, an outbalance Abseed with the uh, body shot. And, well, that was a hard left hook to the body. Two rounds. Uh, we're getting our first looks at uh, Ivan Soriano. Soriano has uh, some speed, pretty accurate. And I feel he's won the first two rounds. 
So the third round begins. Oh, there was a, it looked like they came really close to clashing heads there as Soriano stepped in. Labseed is uh, stepping up his pressure here and looking to cut the ring down a bit by stepping over to his right. So since uh, coming back in 2017 in uh, May, Soriano has won two straight, uh, both by stoppage. He stopped uh, Jeronil Boras, who was a 7-2-1 fighter in three rounds, and Bimbo Nacionales in uh, June in the first round. He had a 14-13-1 record. If you're looking for other names on the, the uh, record of Soriano, uh, the two that come to mind would be Michael Landero, whom he uh, decisioned in back-to-back -back fights back in 2012 and 2013. Landero was at one point a, uh, a locally regarded fighter. And, and there was a stretch uh, in 2011, 2012 where Soriano fought five times in Thailand and he's got some fight here as he's uh, stepping up his pressure and backing up uh, Abseed now. Oh, that was a nice counter left took by Soriano. Soriano has Abseed's lunges timed in, and he's trying to meet him to the punch, or meet him with a punch, when he steps in. It's not a bad strategy if you can pull it off. Oh, and that was a nice right hand by Soriano that sends Abseed into the ropes, and uh, there's the end of the round. Fourth round coming up. From my first impression of what's going on tonight, I really want to see that, that Soriano versus uh, Hino fight. And of course, that was a vacant title fight, and and the rules stipulate that when a fighter wins a vacant championship, he has to, uh, in his first defense, uh, face a mandatory. So it does look like that would be the next fight uh, for Hino. So we are in the fourth round underway. Soriano in the uh, red and yellow trunks. Abseed in the uh, black and white trunks. That's the, uh, the magic of Philippine boxing. Uh, you get these hotbeds of activity, like Cebu, like uh, here in Manila, to an extent. And you have fighters from all over the country, they fight here. And we have Abseed from Bukidnon against uh, General Santos City's uh, Soriano.
Serrano fainting with those jabs, trying to get Absey to make a move, and then he wants to make his move. So it's almost like he's trying to draw a counter out of Abseed, and then he wants to counter the counter. And there was the move right there. Gets Abseed to uh, commit to something, and then feeds him a right hand to the mouth. Oh, that was a an audible shot. To a place no man wants to get hit. And that'll ruin your weekend. That sounded like a, uh, a two-run double into the corner. And uh, Soriano is uh, shaking it off. Didn't appear intentional, but... I don't think it really matters uh, to Soriano. And Epsito is uh, flirting again with a low blow. And there were two uh, right hooks to the body as uh, Soriano stepped out. And it appears that at least for the moment, uh, Soriano isn't too comfortable, although it's hard to imagine being comfortable. Oh, Soriano falls off balance and was that a knockdown? Was that a knockdown? They're gonna call that a knockdown. As Abseats walked into a right uppercut and his glove touched the canvas. So there's the first knockdown of the fight. Doesn't appear that Epsi was uh, overly hurt. And it, you can see right there, while uh, Soriano was holding him down, he also made sure to grab his arms to avoid a low blow. They're uh, rubbing water on the left arm. They're, they're massaging the, the legs and the arms of Soriano in the corner. That's uh, Dodi Boy Agravio. A, uh, one time a uh, pretty tough fighter himself. And it was just unusual. It looked like uh, Soriano was holding his arms in a, in, a, in a difficult or different way than he had been in previous rounds. Round underway. Was, well, could that have been a knockdown? I don't know if uh, the knee of Abbasi touched the canvas, but it looked like he, he jumped into a right hand. That's the thing when you are. Uh, Jumping in, you have to make sure you don't jump into something. And Soriano has uh, made that his uh, his mission tonight. Still, we have Abseed is uh, coming forward. This is really the only way that he can win the fight. He has to come forward uh, and, 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 and break, make something happen with Soriano. Soriano's got the speed that where he can 
fight from a distance and get something going for himself. Uh, Absi really doesn't have that luxury. And, and it, it appears that it, it may be an issue of Absi slipping on the center decal. We've had a lot of fights tonight, a lot of sweat. Haven't seen a, a whole lot of uh, towels in there to uh, clean up the mess. But if you're wondering if um, Absi, who was knocked down earlier in the fight, has been stopped, has been stopped twice. Once in uh, September of 2016 by Lido Dante in the seventh round. And he was also stopped by in uh, Japan just this July against Tsubasa Kura, who was 10-0 uh, at the time. But Jason Ver has been in with some good fighters. Uh, he went uh, the six-round distance against uh, Juan Hing Menayothin, the uh, current uh, WBC 105-pound uh, champion. So you heard the WBC Open scoring. 40 to 35 on all three scorecards. That, that, that includes a 10-8 round for Soriano when he scored that knockout. Awesome. We have uh, more of the same in the sixth round. We have, uh, oh, that was a, uh, a slip, obviously, as Absi was uh, throwing a right jab. You have to wonder if it's something with his shoes, because he was not on the decal there. But it appears he, something is different about the way that his foot connects with the canvas from the way it connects with Soriano. Oh, that was a nice right hand from Soriano. So Soriano doesn't have to be the biggest puncher to uh, do a lot of damage, because Abseed is uh, lunging in, and Soriano is able to meet him at the point that he lunges in with straight right hands. So it's almost as if Absi's helping Soriano to uh, cause damage. It was a nice uh, body shot by Soriano. And Absi is just missing with those left hands. In his dreams, he, he would want to land one of those shots and see how Soriano reacts to his power. The Abseed has been in with some good fighters. He's been in, like we said, with Juan Hang Meniothan. And Meniothan right now is 49-0. Uh, uh, not a huge puncher either, but he's a good fighter.
But Soriano at uh, 108 pounds, you have to um, you have to imagine he, he he's the kind of fighter who can really get some work done. There's definitely something to Soriano. The seventh round underway. Soriano's been able to uh, keep Abseed at bay with some pretty basic boxing. And it was a nice right hand to the body. Stepping in, and when you're fighting a southpaw, especially, you have to kind of you can see Soriano, he's checking that lead right glove almost as if to measure his opponent, make sure that he's right in, in front of him when he makes his move. Oh, that was a nice right hand. Soriano was able to sneak between the gloves. And uh, I'm looking now at the uh, shoes of Abseed. Looks like he they've wrapped them in tape. Figuring perhaps that uh, he's been slipping around on those shoes. Not able to uh, keep his footing. We're watching uh, not speed chess, but chess without the clock. Guys uh, really sitting around and thinking out each move, weighing each uh, maneuver and trying to figure out what the consequences would be, the risk and reward. Just short with that right hand, but he had a—you uh, can see what he had in mind with it. And again, you see uh, Abseed uh, wiping his feet. He must feel that he's uh, still slipping around there. See how something like that, something like that, can affect a fighter. And, you can, and in the corner right now, they're working on those uh, shoes. They must still feel that he is not as stable as uh, he could be. They're wrapping it in another layer of, of tape. But when a when a fighter doesn't feel confident in his own ability to, um, and in his footing, basically. 
it can really throw a guy's game plan off. He's not 100%, he's not sure that when he steps in to make a move, that he won't lose his balance and be completely vulnerable to a counter punch from Soriano. And Soriano, as quick as he is, uh, doesn't need too many advantages, too many, too many more advantages than he's already had so far. So we are the eighth round underway now. We have a, uh, a, a fresh uh, layer of tape on the shoes of Abseed. And they just clashed heads, something fierce. And, and Abseed was trying to take advantage. And uh, it does appear that Soriano is uh, cut, although he has his back turned. Hard to see where it is. But he's wincing as if uh, blood is rushing out of his face right now. And uh, is that in the forehead area? It appears to be in the forehead area. The doctor's going to take a look at it. We've not really gotten a uh, clean look at that cut yet. The doctor is uh, nodding his head as if they, he thinks that they can continue. Uh, yeah, it's in the forehead area. Not, I mean, it looks clearly bad um, aesthetically. But it's not over the eye or a place that would uh, cause imminent uh, danger. And it'll take a few moments for Soriano to get comfortable or to um, adjust to the reality of his face uh, falling apart, basically. Soriano is, uh, it's almost like he's, uh, he, see, he feels the blood and he wants to fight, but uh, Absey knocks him off balance with a left hand. Absey is, uh, he sees the blood and he's like a bull rushing towards red. And uh, the blood has uh, given renewed urgency and confidence to Jacever Abseed. And Soriano just dips out of the way of a home run left hand from Abseed. Soriano's face is a bloody mask at this moment. Not sure how much it's affecting his vision, but it's making for some uh, garish vis visuals. I mean, that cut is really open. It's not in a dangerous spot, but it doesn't look pretty. But this is boxing. The fighter has to know how to fight when he's in adversity. And uh, Soriano is, uh, he's stepping up to the plate with some adversity here. So that was a, uh, an accidental headbutt that Jason for Abseed, um, uh, Abseed and Soriano's heads clashed. Soriano's head was up in the air, just as it was there in that near collision. Soriano got the worst of it, and now they're going to have a chance to work on that cut in the corner. Taking a look here at the corner. I see a towel there. They have a towel there. I'm trying to see if they're using uh, any adrenaline or some other kind of uh, uh, coagulant. But uh, the, uh, the Grabios are world-class trainers. I mean, Junior Grabio has had world champions. He knows what to do. And yeah, it does appear that they're uh, applying 
uh, some sort of liniment uh, to the uh, forehead area. And uh, the blood has stopped, at least for the moment. And the ninth round begins, and we should be hearing uh, more from the scorecards uh, shortly. I can see OPBF uh, chairman and GAB chairman uh, Bob Mitra tallying something over at ringside. And Soriano's, uh, he's found his accuracy again. So we've had uh, both guys uh, dealing with adversity. Abseed with the, um, his shoes uh, appearing to not grip the uh, canvas properly, causing him to slip on a couple of occasions. And Soriano with the uh, cut on his forehead from the accidental head clash. And that was a, those are nice body shots from uh, Soriano. And Absey backs off momentarily. Seventy-eight, seventy-three, uh, for Soriano. So that means that Absey was able to get two rounds out of the last four. But he's got, he's got a lot more uh, ground to catch up with. And he's going to need something here. He's going to need. He's going to need at least a knockdown or two. And Epsi has shown uh, no indication that he is uh, ready to quit, even as he uh, is backing up here. But Epsi is all fighter. He's got a big opportunity here with a uh, with with Soriano um, cut over the the forehead uh, during the previous round. Soriano was able to get some good work done with the body shots that were uh, able to slow down Abseed, um, at least momentarily in this round. But sometimes when we have a fighter who is uh, becoming aggressive, he's getting, uh, growing in confidence, uh, confidence can turn into overconfidence very quickly. And it was a straight right hand from Soriano. Soriano could have some opportunities to walk Abseed into some punches as he uh, times an uppercut just as Abseed is bending forward. Oh, that was a nice counter left hook. So Soriano, even, you can tell he wants to get that jab in and he's, got, and he's found a way to make his left hand effective at measuring. Even if he's not landing the jab, He's still getting it in, measuring it, and then throwing his power shots off of it. There's a left hand out. Both guys swing after the bell. There were multiple punches after the bell. No one was in the in the middle right there to break them up. Uh, perhaps uh, referee Fernandez in Australia should have been in close there to get between the two, but. Um, Luckily, both men uh, came to their senses and, um, and went to their respective corners instead of uh, us having a brawl here. We want to see boxing, not brawling. Although a brawl in the context of a boxing match wouldn't be too bad either. So please, between the bells, not after them. Yeah, the 10th round coming up. Soriano stabilized himself um, following that cut. Uh, and, and you have to credit the, uh, the work in the corners. Although there was another head clash right there. You have to credit the work in the corner to, to stop the cut. Um, it has not been a, a factor. Sorry, I don't know what the uh, body shot right there. But that cut was not a factor in the last round. And uh, part of that is the fighters helping out the trainers. Because you can put the liniment, you can put the, uh, the adrenaline on the cut to stop it from bleeding. Uh, but a fighter has to protect it too and uh, make sure it doesn't get worse and give the, uh, 
give the solution uh, some time to get work. Epstein has to know the scorecards right now. That they're not in his favor. And he's going to have to try and do something different to uh, get some work done against Soriano. He, uh, outside of that brief period um, in the eighth round, I believe, when uh, Soriano was uh, affected by the cuts, uh, he's not been able to. Uh, he's not been able to get him to the ropes and and, and pound him and, and put punches together that are affecting uh, Soriano. Not in any sustained fashion. It's it's interesting how Soriano holds his arms, um, particularly when he's at distance. He holds his arms like a like a man who has a uh, two uh, ruptured biceps. Like right there, he's holding his arms in a... In a oh, that was a nice overhand left hand from, from Absey there. And Soriano's backing off right now. He's trying to clear his head. He wasn't ready for that shot. And it was a nice straight left hand right there. And another body shot from Absey. And suddenly we have some drama in the 10th round. Abseed is all over Soriano right now. Soriano tries to grab and hold and buy some time. That left hand affected him, and, um, and I'm sure he's happy to hear that 10 second clapper. Abseed uh, lets off one wild swing at the bell. And uh, Soriano needed that bell as he was in trouble from one overhand left that he didn't expect. He, I, he thought the punch was coming straight and there was an arc to it instead and it landed right on the chin. And Soriano felt that. a little bit unsteady. He looked a little bit unsteady in the corner right there. And he's uh, clearly trying to keep, play keep away. But he lands uh, three punches as Abseed uh, stood at center range. Is here to take. He's, he's here to win the belt. He's done everything he needed to earlier. Soriano, Soriano, Soriano has uh, led through most of the fight, but um, Absid is trying to score a um, twenty-point. Long range shot. That could erase everything. And uh, both corners are working on the tape of their fighters. You could see it that the tape was, uh, looked like it was about to come loose from both men. And uh, Abseed is, uh, has won the race to get the, uh, the tape on.
Seed is like a bull. And Soriano is like a, a bullfighter who has taken a few gores, but he's still in there, waving the cape. At this moment, Abseed looks like the fresher fighter. Soriano looks like a man who needs to get to that final bell. Soriano has done a very good job of, uh, of piling up points in. And uh, he had the knockdown earlier in the fight that he scored. So he has the margins on the cards. Abseed is trying to make it sure so that they never hear the cards. If Soriano is able to get to the final belt, he wins the fight. He wins the interim or the silver title, however they choose to phrase it. Abseed needs a knockout and he knows it. Look at the way that, that Soriano holds his arms. It's like he has two muscle cramps in each arm. And they're rubbing his arms in between rounds. And usually that's not something that you want to see because, uh, you know, massage, relax, or, you know, it can, it can tire out. A fighter's muscles. So we have three minutes left in the fight. Three minutes left in the boxing card. Uh, and I, I understand there's going to be a Christmas party afterwards. Uh, so if you're watching on YouTube, you won't be able to attend. But if you're here in the attendance, uh, you might get some uh, candy. So three minutes for Absi to uh, try and erase everything. And Absi is now, uh, for some reason, fighting as an Orthodox fighter. Uh, which could only help Soriano get that jab in. And then he lands a nice right hand over the top, uh, Soriano does, that immediately convinces Absi to switch back to Southpaw. The way that Abseed is swinging, this, this fight isn't over until it's over. So Soriano has to be uh, alert for the, the next two minutes or so. Because Abseed isn't trying to win points right now. He's trying to set up one shot that'll hurt Soriano and then try to open up from there and, and score a knockout. He can't win the fight on the cards. Abseed is uh, switching back to Orthodox, which is back to Southpaw. He's trying to he's trying to set up one shot. That's pretty much what it looks like. Soriano's not really taking the bait. I think he figures that Abseed is dangerous from the Southpaw stance, and he's uh, he's playing it cautious, playing it like a man who knows he has to fight one. Oh, the Absey right there. I just tried to uh, land something on the switch. He's uh, shaking that left hand. Almost like he wants him to look at the left hand. And then he's going to try and do something 
uh, once he's distracted Soriano. But Soriano isn't uh, taking any chances. He's not. Uh, he's he's kind of uh, holding the ball out, running down the clock. And uh, down they both go and. Soriano looks like he's in a lot of pain. Like he's been in pain all fight, the way he's holding his arms. I don't know why Abseed is walking away. He, the, the last 10 seconds, he should have been trying to throw punches. But it does appear that he realized it wasn't going to happen for him. And time ran out. And uh, Soriano's most likely almost certainly won this fight unless my math is wrong There is the, uh, I guess, the silver interim OPBF belt. And uh, the one thing, the, the reason the OPBF championship is so um, uh, coveted is because it affords the winner a top 15 ranking um, with the WBC. So a guy can get himself in a position for a world championship opportunity if he has that belt and then you know of course they can from there try to move up the rankings uh, and see what happens the announcement of the decision of uh, this chairman uh, Baha Mitra in the middle right there with the belt showing it off to the camera right there and it does appear that we will have a uh, decision victory for Soriano they've not taken the gloves off of Soriano yet although you would think that the first thing you do
Evans Soriano wins a unanimous decision. He appears to be um, the next challenger for the OPBF Light Flyweight Champion, Edward Hino of the uh, Anton Chuko uh, stable. So that fight looks like it'll be something coming up uh, in the near future for Hino and Soriano. So that's all for tonight's fights. Um, uh, people here at the Makati Cinema Square Arena will be enjoying their Christmas party. Uh, but that's the end of our broadcast of uh, boxing fights from the Makati Cinema Square Arena. For Rappler.com, I'm Ryan Sunglia. Thank you very much for tuning in. So stay